A wastewater reclamation facility of its own kind in Kenya is underway here at the Konsa Technopolis. What has been produced in the city will remain inside the city. Setting standards for sewerage management in Kenya. We are doing it in a different way because it's a smart city. We have an opportunity to have sustainable water management if I were a governor. Instead of going very far to benchmark, I would tell them, just come to Konsa. This is a new city. It's been built from scratch with the latest technologies. This is a continuation of our series, tracking progress here at Konsa Technopolis as a smart city. Welcome, I'm Alex Chamada. Many urban areas in Kenya have poor solid and liquid waste management systems, leading to this. Systems that facilitate recycling play a crucial role in solving this problem. You may have heard of the campaign, Reuse, Reduce, Recycle. That is what smart cities are known for, and Konsa Technopolis has what it takes to achieve that. Wastewater facility is uh, required in every urban development, and they are there across uh, the country. But uh, one which uh, reclaims water and uh, drips the water to the potable standard, which means the WHO standard of potable water, this could be one of its kind, not only in Kenya, but the region, and especially designed for uh, a, a such a, a city which uh, will support over 30,000 uh, population of phase one of Konsa Technopolis. The main source of water expected to serve the city is Thwake Dam in Makweni County. The waste will be treated to be recycled in the city, it means the 95-98% of the wastewater will be reutilized. Reutilized for irrigation, for um, hydrants, means fire systems, and also can be utilized, reutilized and treated for the potable water. Also the sludge and the kind of materials, the solid part of the waste, can be utilized as fertilizer for agriculture, means can be reutilized also in the city. The wastewater will include water coming from residential and commercial buildings, from the bathrooms, kitchens, toilets, to name a few. As you know, this is going to be very critical. It, we need even the wastewater treatment facility to support even the contract construction phase of the city. Water reclamation is a bit technical, but here is the project manager's brief explanation of how it works. We starting with the uh, biological treatment. Later on, you have uh, what means the segregation between the solid part and the liquid part. The solid part will be uh, treated in a separate manner. There are also the, um, what means the, the clarifier. This is a special big tank where we segregate the two uh, parts of the, of the wastewater. And the sludge must be recovered in a special tank and for the uh, future reutilization of the things. It is a race against time. This place is busy 24-7. There are about 300 people working on this facility during the day and around 80 people during the night. Daniel Lenshinka is among the workers who are part of this history in the making. I feel proud being part of this uh, great team that is building the modern water rec reclamation facility or waste uh, reclamation facility which other cities can emulate and use it because it is, it is not good to waste, to, to, to waste things that are being wasted when we have a, me a method of uh, reusing them. Women too have come out strongly to prove that they are gems in this male-dominated field. In my role as an inspector, I make sure like everything is okay. I go to check the steels, the formworks, the water utilities, the manholes and everything. Such technologies in urban development go hand in hand with sustainable development goals. Basically we are saying we have an opportunity to have sustainable water management through the wastewater uh, reuse plant, which is really a very good and innovative effort 
and we would really encourage many other agencies to adopt this strategy because water is a scarce resource. But also we are saying, as a ministry through Konza, we also want to look at our environment. We have more than one million uh, seedlings of trees and we have a strategy that we will be planting trees every year to also just manage uh, our environmental aspect of it. We live in an environment that is important. We must always protect and work with the environment and ensure that the things that we do that will, you know, leave a country that our future generations will also benefit from. So the wastewater management uh, reclamation is also, you know, one of the ways of ensuring we're managing our environment. And to be able to do that, you need to monitor, you need to manage this water, you need to ensure the quality of the water is good. And, and so to do this, technology is used. If I were a county government, a governor, instead of going very far to benchmark, I would tell them, just come to Konza to benchmark, see what is being done, because it's not too late. There are cities in the world that have been revitalized and re-engineered through the adoption of smart, smart methods of doing things, okay? Such cities, I can tell you, one is Curitiba in Brazil. Curitiba, 40 years ago, was one of the toughest places to be in Brazil, but some 20 years ago, Curitiba was seen as the best city in a third world country, where things just work. Seoul City in South Korea also applies smart technologies to the preservation of its natural environment. The city's four sewerage treatment centers refine and purify wastewater, and remaining sewage waste is used to fuel the urban gas systems and vehicles. Engineer Lucy Wanjiku, a member of the Institute of Engineers of Kenya and an expert in wastewater treatment, looks at the wastewater treatment plant at Konsa Technopolis as a perfect example to showcase how the various engineering disciplines interact to provide smart solutions in urban development. In the design of a wastewater treatment, uh, we will involve a seaboy engineer to convey the sewage and deliver it to the sewage treatment plant. Also, a mechanical engineer comes in to design the pumps and the air compressors needed for the aeration or the pumping. Then the electrical engineers come in to supply the requisite power to run all these components. And now with modern wastewater treatment because of automation, a software engineer will also come in to, to design and analyze the softwares that are needed. Finally, on the water quality control, a chemical engineer comes in to understand the different aspects. Engineer Wanjiku has made her contribution in bringing modern wastewater management solutions closer home. She runs EcoCycle, an organization that installs wastewater treatment and recycling plants, especially in residential areas. Advantages are many, from saving water to turning homes green. Statistics indicate that water coverage in Kenya has been improving steadily and now stands at 59% according to the latest impact report by the Water Services Regulatory Board. However, access to sanitation facilities is lagging behind. The report indicates that seaward sanitation coverage in the country is 17% only. So that tells you about 80 to 75% have to deal with their sewage on their own, even as the government plans to expand. According to Athi Waterworks Development Agency, that is responsible for the development maintenance and management of water and sewerage infrastructure in Nairobi and the metropolitan area, improvements in the city's sanitation system will still apply the old model. This is where wastewater is naturally biodegraded in sewerage ponds and discharged back into the environment. With the upcoming development in the city, the city dwellers themselves, or the community, at their own uh, initiative, have started the modern wastewater treatment plant using biodigesters. And that is as far as we can be able to explain that we have been able to embrace the modern ways of wastewater management. 
there are many, many, many uh, methods of wastewater management that have been employed across the world. And Nairobi City has not been able to come up or to, to be able to invest in the modern ways of wastewater management. Kwanza is a model city that the country is uh, relying on to be able to show people across the country how cities can manage their water, their environment. And so, you know, we have actually many tours now happening at Kwanza for people to come and see how we're building, what is going on, how the infrastructure is being put in place. Members of the National Assembly Committee on ICT, whose chairman is Marakwet West MP William Kisang, visited the Konsa Technopolis for a fact-finding mission, and this was their impression of the project. We are very happy with what is going on here at Konsa, and we are promising as a committee that we'll continue to appropriate money to Konsa so that we realize the dream of those who came up with this uh, concept initially. Their visit followed a similar visit by the Cabinet Secretary for Foreign Affairs and International Trade, Rachel Omamo. We are here to project the innovative uh, potential of our country, to let the world know and to ensure that those who come, come with a be believable, bankable projects early and they don't need to go back and think again. They've already heard the story clearly and they're able to move quickly. This is a Vision 2030 project, so it's not one where you can say it will end on uh, this day, because there is what we are doing as government in terms of the horizontal infrastructure, and I believe that with the partners that we have and the contractors, we will be able to meet the, the deadline. We're trying to do this even before 2022. But uh, we've got also then the different partners and uh, people who are coming to build uh, their own facilities. This is the vertical infrastructure. There's the universities, the hospitals, the you know, accommodation. So all those are also now progressing. Wiper Democratic Movement Party leader Kalonzo Musioka also visited the project as both local and international leaders continued to express confidence in the project. During his visit, Israeli ambassador to Kenya described Konsa Technopolis as an impressive project. Israel is also very much interested in developing smart cities. So I think here, uh, we found here today many areas of uh, potential cooperation between uh, Israel and, uh, and the Konsa city and this project over here. Uh, Israel is known for added value technologies in some fields, which I think could be very uh, uh, useful. Uh, for, this, uh, for the emerging of uh, this smart city. We at Konsa Technopolis are very keen to really learn a lot from Israel, especially on the innovation ecosystem. Israel is known as a leader in technology and also in the vibrancy of their innovation and their startup ecosystem. In conclusion, the horizontal infrastructure of the Konsa Technopolis is currently at 40% and is expected to be completed by the year 2021. The role of the government is to provide up to about 10% of the infrastructure required, which is actually to service the location, put up facilities like this one, which will serve the city, the solid waste system, ensure there are roads, ensure there are necessary facilities like the police stations, and the rest of it is to now attract the private sector. So the city's life has started. Globally, many new technologies have come up on how to build, how to manage cities, and ensure that those cities are smart. Konza is the showcase for our region, for our country, for everyone to see how we can be able to implement this effectively, efficiently, and really improve the quality of lives of Kenyans. And so I would encourage everyone to go to Konza, see this uh, marvel that is now taking off, and be part of it.